you want to express through this activity what you have to do. Hi, I'm Grace. I study sociology in University College London, UCL, in my first year. And today I'm gonna read through my personal statement, my UKPS during the last year's application. Because I aware that sociology is not quite a popular major like economics or medicine. So there are limited resources online on YouTube or website in general. So I'm gonna read my personal statement paragraph by paragraph so that you can know how I construct the whole structure of that and maybe gain some insights in um, in each paragraph. And finally, I'll talk through some tips that worked for me last year during my application. So I really wish that if you have watched the video, I wish you can gain some insight from it. Just like I wish I could gain some insight from the videos I viewed in last year. Let's get started. The first time I read Peter Hassler's River Town, the scene where Hassler got a lot of hello banterly from local residents in Fuling reminds me of my own actions of creating foreigners out of curiosity and stereotypes. I laughed out at first, but then a sense of sympathy and, and embarrassment welled it up. I saw the narrow prejudice of mine as a child like those of the residents with perspectives instilled and incalculated by one's own living environment. Sociology provides me with lenses, tools, and framework to understand the complex social relationships and institutions in today's world. So this is my first paragraph. I began my personal statement with, um, with kind of a book review. So from my first paragraph, I began my personal statement with a kind of a reflection when I was reading Peter Hassler's River Town, and then my experience correlated with the book. And then I ended my first paragraph with kind of a my definition of sociology and how it provides me with the framework, with the tools I wanted in understanding today's world. When studying A level global perspectives, I led discussions concerning equality of education gave presentation on racial discrimination in a global context, and examined the efficacy of governmental measures in tackling poverty. When studying economics, aside from learning the knowledge on syllabus, I also worked to address systematic inequality through economic measures. Exploring the interconnectivity between sociology, economics, and other subjects provides me with interdisciplinary skills and perspectives to approach topics of my interest. So in the second paragraph, um, I connected my learning in, in A-level global perspectives and economics to my insights in sociology. So I connected these two subjects to provide my interdisciplinary skills and the interconnectivity I saw between these subjects. So the thing is, my school didn't offer me a sociology subject in A-level. So if you are taking sociology courses, you are taking a systematic sociology like AP or A-level or IB, whatever, just reflect upon your experience here, your previous experience in learning sociology and that reflect how you're going to learn, how your curiosity for the sociology you want to learn in the university. Through attending the course Introduction to Sociology, Self Society and the State, led by Professor Nina Johnson from Swarthmore College in Shanghai, I systematically studied the discipline of sociology for the first time, particularly discussions on inequality under the framework of functionalism challenged my previous understanding of social structure. Studying Davis Moore's thesis not only offers me theoretical approaches to understand institutionalized inequality and social stratification, but also makes me re-examine the importance of recognizing the least rewarding jobs in various social contexts. I started to rethink social division of labor and the hierarchical social structure in different contexts. Um, so in my third paragraph, I introduce my first time kind of a systematic study of sociology and how these theoretical concepts and theories challenge my previous understanding of the world, challenge my outlook and how I gained insights, how I viewed my implications from here. Driven by the impulse to further explore these sociological topics, I attended an online course 
classical sociological theories given by Dr. Barr Van, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce his name, from University of Amsterdam to furnish myself with more theoretical and methodological knowledge in examining dynamic social existence and processes. Reading about Weber's concerns on how bureaucratization would suppress individuals in different social positions, I started to think about how emerging approaches and channels could provide new possibilities for individuals to express their voice in a modern era. Nevertheless, as social media constantly magnifying the amplitude of our social cohesion, we are living what Han Bu Chang calls hybrid community, where communication is replaced by the egocentric digital hybrid communication. Studying this course not only allows me to critically compare the structure of modern societies and observe issues brought by modernity like Durkheim, it also reminds me of the importance of transcending binary thinking, thinking critically and pursuing the truth become my life philosophy. So from this paragraph, firstly, I want to show how me as an independent learner, I have the impulse, the motivation, the curiosity to explore further topics out of my interest and in my own time. Then the secondly, I connected the classical theories by Max Weber and a modern I and somehow modern theorist by Han Byung Cho reflected upon how how the digital communications now in modern societies. So this reflects my sociological thinking. And finally, I reflected upon the skill sets, the mindsets I learned it from studying these theories. So it's not that when I complete the course, I achieve my academic interests, my curiosity, and that is done. It's not. But I also want to show them that through these learnings, my thinking process become more critical. It transformed me to a more critical thinker. In extracurricular time, I participated in volunteer teaching activities in Shanxi, Hunan in 2019. It was the first time that I realized the huge gap of social wealth and resource distribution between classes. It reveals how such inequality has become generationally perpetual and intensified during urbanization. While also demonstrate the, the agency of individuals from lower cl social classes. This experience gives me a chance to re-examine sociological theories and methods through contextualizing them in specific real-life situation. So in this paragraph, I chose to put a practical experience I had as a volunteering teacher in that time because I want to demonstrate I am not only an independent learner online, but I also wear this, the theories I learned are not perfect and I want to have the chance to re-examine them in a real life situation. And through this activity, you can see that my observation of those inequality reflected my compassion as a social researcher. So the last paragraph, I hope to contribute myself to the examination of various social issues and promote social justice as a lifelong career. I'm eager to further study sociology at university where I can be coached to achieve my ideals. So compared to the US personal statement, which you want to construct a personal story based on your experience, um, the UK one is quite simple because it's only focused on how you demonstrate your academic interest, your intellectual ability, <laughs> your thinking process. So firstly, you're going to selectively choose what experience, what achievement, what course you learn, you're going to put into your personal essay to demonstrate your intellectual ability in a clear structure. And secondly, in last year, when I finished my first draft, I sent to nearly everybody near me, my friends, my families, um, my college counselors, my academic tutor, nearly, and my English teacher, of course. The thing is, maybe they cannot offer me what I wanted, a professional sociological career background. Yes, they can offer me from a normal perspective, for example, which part should I add a more reflection upon it and which part there is there isn't quite a sufficient elaboration which I have to like add it on and improve a lot. And also a thing to watch out is don't simply list your achievements or the competitions you have won, but to express through this achievement what you have learned, what you have gained as an independent researcher or as a volunteer or as 
just a high school student in your A-level course. And finally, never worry about the content you're gonna put in a personal statement. Never worry about whether it is to high school level, it's, it's not like deeper enough because the college admission officer, they want to, they don't want to know how much knowledge, how abundant source of evidence you have learned, you have gained in course. They want to know how you think. They want to know it's a process, not a result. They don't expect a report or an academic assess. They just want to know how you think, how you study as a high school student, and that simple it is. So this is my personal essay and my tipsable. I really hope you gain some insight from it and, and I wish you can get into the university you want to and thank you for watching.